Hey everyone and welcome back to another Plowbender's Custom Creations and today we're going to be looking at a very special piece from my collection and originally I had planned to do a video where I build the custom and then show it and the custom that I wanted to feature was this 1970 Dodge Power Wagon here but I basically decided to just do a separate build video on that and just keep things simple but that being the case we're not going to be looking at this custom and instead we're going to be taking a trip back in time as we look at the first ever custom I did which is this 164 scale 2003 GMC Sierra crew cab Duramax diesel pickup truck so let's get into it so like I said before this truck was the first ever custom build that I did at least in terms of 164 scale die cast and I built this sometime back in 2010 and it was made to look like a truck that a neighbor of mine had in real life but there was quite a bit of work that went into this project to get the truck looking correct because it originally started out as a low rider and it had to be lifted. And to do that with trucks even today, I just installed new wheels and axles underneath them. And you can see some of how this is done. There's a piece of tubing here, which is super glued to the frame. Then I go back over it, reinforcing it with JB Weld. And I can see in this case, I did have to cut into the frame a little bit to get everything sitting level. But uh, also these are painted black to hide the modifications afterwards. But I also installed new wheels. These are not the originals, but I'll get to that a little bit later on. But another modification I had to do was the truck originally had skirting running under the cab and the bed here, probably to make it look lower to the ground. But that had to be gotten rid of and it was relatively easy to remove it. I just had to go and cut it away from the plastic frame with an X-Acto knife. But with that modification done, I looked into paint for this truck. And I use a number of different techniques when I paint these, but this particular truck here, I just went over the whole truck with sandpaper to sand down the old paint and graphics and everything that were on it. And then gave it a coat of primer to check for any imperfections. And afterwards, it was spray painted gloss white. And then pretty much left to cure overnight before I moved on to these finer details. Now these details like the door handles, the chrome trim, uh, there's a Duramax logo right there, the mirrors, bed liner, the lights, all that is painted by hand and I mean it's possibly not the best but you gotta understand how long ago it was I did this truck so uh, you know I've come a long way since with my uh, techniques and what have you. And of course, back in these days, I didn't use any decals at the time either. Now, when it comes to the details on this truck, over time, some details have been added and others have been removed. But I want to just focus on what details were on this truck when I first built it. And as I mentioned before, these are not the original wheels. The original ones looked a lot different and they were off another 164 scale vehicle. And although I wanted something that was more accurate at the time, I opted to use those just because they were about the only thing I had. But another thing was I added Nerf bars to the truck, and they were made simply by bending brass wire to shape and then gluing it to the bottom of the truck. And if we look under the frame here, you can just see the holes there where the Nerf bars used to mount into. But going around to the other side here, I also had an exhaust pipe just under the... Uh, back of the bed here and that was made using a syringe which I honestly didn't care for and got rid of it in later years and again you can see here just where that was mounted at one time. Another thing I had to do to this truck it originally did not have a rear bumper on it this one was robbed off of a cheap dollar store car you know that you get at the dollar store I just went ahead and cut this off repainted it and then glued it to the back of the truck and the rear hitch here is made from one millimeter styrene just glued to the bumper there. And I do that for all the customs that I do. And also went ahead and drilled a hole in the bed for the fifth wheel hitch. Although I wouldn't consider that an added detail. It's just a drilled hole. But uh, something uh, you might have noticed. These mirrors here, I did not add this detail to the truck. These were part of the original casting. And I just left them as is. I didn't do anything with them. Now in later years the real truck had a few modifications done which I went ahead and replicated on this model and the first being the push bar on the front. Now this was somewhat scratch built uh, just this middle section was what I started with. This was off a 164 scale police car 
and these bars across the headlights and over top of the grill these were made of brass and added later and uh, once the bar was done it was painted black and glued onto the front of the truck which I don't think it turned out too bad it looks a little bit crooked but then again I think it's just uh, the shoddy work that I did back in the day the last detail change I made to this truck was the running boards and the exhaust here and as I mentioned before the real truck originally had nerf bars but over time they were just eaten away by all the road salt and they were replaced with running boards but I've attempted to replicate that here. These are made out of brass, cut, bent, and shaped to fit, but they are definitely not the best. You can see how uneven the bends are. There are tool marks in the brass, and I'd even say the painting on these is not the best. But again, you gotta understand the time this truck comes from. I was not as experienced with custom building as I am these days. Now the exhaust was moved to just behind the cab because on the real truck, the muffler was eliminated when a Banks power kit was put on it, and I did replace the exhaust entirely. This is made from aluminum tubing, and there's a small uh, brad nail in there that's been bent and new hole drilled into the frame to fit that pipe. And I think it looks a lot better than what I used originally. Uh, I just feel like it's more to scale what it should have been. But other than all that, the truck has pretty much remained the same since haven't made any more changes to it. Last thing I wanted to show was this matching trailer I built for this truck and unfortunately it's unfinished because I did manage to cut it to size, I built fenders for it and I painted it but I never got around to adding the hay racks or the back ramps here but even though this truck is unfinished I don't think it looks too bad as a set. Uh, unfortunately this project kind of got abandoned because at the time it got pushed aside for other projects I was doing and just never got back to it but as it sits it doesn't look bad at least in my opinion although as I mentioned before it's a little uh, rough nut compared to what I do these days but again this build's about 10 years old so but overall yeah uh, that's going to do it for this Plowbender's Custom Creations next 10 Plowbender's Custom Creations videos I'm going to be doing I'm going to be showing movie vehicle customs that i've built so hopefully you guys will look forward to that uh, feel free to follow me on my other pages i'll have links down in the video description so until next time take care everyone and i'll see you soon